Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over solutions to the second set of problems, or the second half of the chapter from Topic 7 on equilibrium. So starting with Exercise 10, they talk about the manufacture of sulfur trioxide. And as you read about in your book, this is kind of an important process um, in industry. And it can be represented by the equation below. And they want to know what happens when a catalyst is added to an equilibrium mixture from this reaction. And A says the rate of the forward reaction increases and the rate of the reverse reaction decreases. That's not true because they both increase. In fact, they increase equally. B, the rate of both forward and reverse reactions increase. That's true. The value of delta H increases. It's not going to affect the enthalpy at all. Um, whatever you do to reaction rate or equilibrium, neither one is going to affect enthalpy. So that's just straight out wrong. And the yield of sulfur trioxide increases. Catalysts will not affect the yield. They only affect the rate. You'll just get your yield more quickly, typically. So the only true statement there is B. Both forward and reverse reactions increase. And again, like I said, they increase equally. Number 11, what will happen to the position of equilibrium and the value of the equilibrium constant when temperature is increased? So I look and I see that it's an endothermic reaction. So endothermic means the reactants collide more with heat, the products collide less because they're looking to release heat. So the forward reaction is endothermic, the re re reverse reaction is actually exothermic. So adding heat will shift the equilibrium toward the products, I'll make more product. And when I um, make more product without actually adding any more reactant, that's going to drive my equilibrium constant up. So D would be my correct choice. Number 12, which changes will shift the position of equilibrium to the right in the following reaction? So I've got CO2 becoming CO and O2. Adding a catalyst, that's not going to affect equilibrium at all. So I can take number one out, which means the only answer left is C before I even look at my other choices. Decreasing the oxygen concentration, that's good. Removing a product will increase yield. And increasing the volume of the container. Well, increasing volume would be the same as decreasing pressure. And because the product side are more crowded, decreasing the pressure will favor that side more. So yes, both 2 and 3 will um, shift the position to the right or increase your yield. Number 13, for each of the following reactions, predict in which direction the equilibrium will shift in response to an increase in pressure. So it's always going to shift, increasing the pressure, it's going to shift away from the more crowded side. So A, it's going to shift to the left because products are more crowded. B, look at my gases. H2, they should have indicated, was a gas as well. So my reactant side is more crowded, and it's going to shift right. And then C, they're equally crowded because there's two moles on either side, so it won't shift. There will be no effect from changing the pressure or the volume. 14, how will the equilibrium respond to the following changes? A, if you add H2, so if I look, I see H2 is a product, so that's going to shift it left. It's going to increase product collisions, which will eventually lead to more reactant being produced. Addition of CH4, that's a reactant, so that will increase my product or shift it right. A decrease in the volume, which is really an increase in pressure. And when I look, I see my product size is more crowded, so it's going to shift it left toward the reactants. Removal of CS2, that's a product, <clears throat> so that's going to shift it right. And an increase in temperature, the VE is a strange uh, number there, I think maybe that's a typo, but it's positive, which is what we need. Um, an increase in temperature then is going to favor the endothermic reaction, which is the forward reaction, and shift it right. Number 15, the reaction 2CO plus O2 gives you 2CO2 takes place in, a catalyt takes place in catalytic converters in cars. If this reaction is at equilibrium, will the amount of CO increase, decrease, or stay the same when the pressure is increased by decreasing volume. 
So CO is a reactant. It's the more crowded side. So increasing pressure is going to decrease the amount of CO. It's going to drive the uh, equilibrium away from that more crowded reactant side toward the product. Uh, the pressure is increased by adding O2. Well, that's going to have a double effect. Adding O2 is going to drive it to the right, and increasing the pressure is going to drive it right. So B is really going to decrease your CO level. C, the temperature is increased. Because it's exothermic in the forward direction, this is going to actually increase the CO. And that's the problem is you use an engine, it gets hotter and hotter, so it actually drives this reaction in reverse. And D, a platinum catalyst is used. It doesn't really matter what kind of catalyst it is. Any catalyst will not affect um, the equilibrium. It only affects the rate. So D, there'd be no effect or no change. 16, in the Haber process for the synthesis of ammonia. So they talk a lot about everyday processes. Haber uh, process for ammonia is the one that allows enough fertilizer to be made to create enough food. So you're supposed to have an awareness of the significance of these reactions on our planet and the planet's ability to sustain, you know, 7 billion people. So what effect does the catalyst have? Well, it's going to increase the rate of formation. That's what uh, catalysts do. But as far as the amount of product form, it will have no effect on that. So C is the only one that has it right on the amount that there is no change. And 17, according to the above information, 2SO2 plus O2, so the contact process up there, what temperature and pressure conditions produce the greatest amount of SO2? So what you're supposed to notice is that a high pressure will favor the forward reaction. So that's either C or D. But we want a lower temperature because it's exothermic. So D would be our best choice, high pressure and lower temperature. Number 18, predict how you would expect the value for Kc for the Haber process to change as the temperature is increased. Explain the significance of this in terms of reaction yield. Well, as you increase temperature, you're not actually changing the concentration of reactant or product, but you're driving it to the uh, left. So Kc is roughly equal to my concentration of products over my concentration of reactants, and temperature is going to decrease my concentration of products and increase the reactant. So I would see a decrease in Kc, and I would see a decrease in my yield. So it's going to help my reaction rate, but it is not going to help my yield. Moving on to the practice problems at the back of the book. Number two says the reaction below represents the Haber process for the industrial production of ammonia. So if you haven't noticed by now, they use a lot of similar, the same equations, the Haber process, the contact process, production of methanol, uh, equations or reactions going on inside a catalytic converter. But it says the optimum conditions of temperature and pressure are chosen as a compromise between those that favor a high yield and those that favor a fast rate. Economic considerations are also important. Which statement is correct? A higher temperature would shield a higher yield and a faster rate. Well, the faster rate is true, but it would not be a higher yield because it's exothermic. A lower pressure would ensure a higher yield at lower cost. High pressure does cost more. I mean, you have to do something to create that pressure, just like high temperature costs more. So it would be a lower cost, but lower pressure um, favors the reverse reaction, so that would not give you a higher yield. C, a lower temperature would ensure a higher yield and a faster rate. Well, now the higher yield is true, but the faster rate is not true. So D, a high pressure would ensure a higher yield at a higher cost. That's the one that's true across the board. More pressure will cause more collisions, a greater increase in collisions on the reactant side, so it would create more product, but it's going to cost you more. Three, what is the effect of an increase of temperature on the yield and the equilibrium constant for the following reaction? Remember, temperature is the only one that's going to change equilibrium constant. It's exothermic, so exothermic is going to decrease your yield with an increase in temperature. 
but it's going to increase your rate. So looking at yield, uh, yield is going to decrease. Oh, I'm sorry, an equilibrium constant, not rate. Equilibrium constant then will also decrease because um, you haven't actually changed your concentration of product or reactant. You didn't add or take away either one. You simply changed the temperature, and as you did that, your product decreased, your reactant increased. Um, so your equilibrium constant is going to decrease along with your yield. Number four, consider the equilibrium between methanol and methanol vapor. What happens to the position of equilibrium, equilibrium and the value of Kc as the temperature decreases? Now, they didn't give you a delta H here because you should realize to go from a liquid to a gas, your delta H has to be endothermic. You have to add heat for this phase change. So if you're adding heat, the position of equilibrium, oh, I'm sorry, as temperature decreases, so if you're decreasing heat, that's going to favor the reverse reaction. More gas is going to become liquid. So again, your product is going to decrease. So I've got to shift to the left as I make more reactant. My product is decreasing as my reactant is increasing. And because there's a temperature change, I can expect both KC and equilibrium to change. Five, an increase in temperature increases the amount of chlorine present in the following equilibrium. So that means it's endothermic in the forward reaction and exothermic in the reverse reaction. So A says the higher temperature increases the rate of the forward reaction only. B says the higher temperature increases the rate of the reverse reaction only. C says the higher temperature increases the rate of both reactions, but the forward reaction is affected more than the reverse. And D says the higher temperature increases the rate of both reactions, but the reverse reaction is affected more than the forward. So when you look at this, first of all, they're telling you it's endothermic because you get more product with an increase. So I know delta H is positive. And when you look at A and B, it seems like one of those has to be true. And A is true, but C is a more complete. So this is, you know, one where IB tries to suck you in on saying, oh, yeah, A is true, but C is even more true. It, incre it actually increases the rate of both reactions. So this only is the, uh, the misleading part here. It increases the rate of the forward reaction more. More heat is going to increase collisions on both sides, but it has a greater effect, a more positive effect on the reactant side. And then number six, consider the following <clears throat> reversible reaction. What will happen to the position of equilibrium in the value of Kc when more H plus ions are added at a constant temperature? Now, as soon as you see constant temperature, that's your clue that Kc is not going to change. So this is either C or D. You just have to decide if it shifts left or right. So more H plus, um, that's a product, so it's going to shift it left. So D would be my correct choice. Seven, consider this equilibrium reaction in a sealed container. I've got a gas going to a liquid, so this is going to be endothermic. What will be the effect on equilibrium of increasing temperature? <clears throat> What's well, going to shift it to right? Because I, I'm, it's going to shift it left. I'm going to have more. Oh, I've got this all screwed up here for you. This is exothermic because I'm going from gas to liquid, so I need to remove heat. So increasing temperature is going to drive it left. So it says more of the water will be in the gaseous state at equilibrium. That seems true. More will be in the liquid state. That's not true. At equilibrium, the rate of condensation will be greater than the rate of evaporation. <clears throat> well, at equilibrium, it's going to be equal. And so C and D are not true statements. That's the whole idea of equilibrium is these two rates will be equal. But we should have more of the water in the gaseous state when we increase temperature. We should drive it to the left with the change in temperature. Okay, then number 10, let me just uh, slide up and give myself some room. An example of a homogeneous reversible reaction is the reaction between hydrogen and iodine. Outline the characteristics of a homogeneous chemical system that is in a state of 
uh, equilibrium. So remember, there's five characteristics. It's dynamic. It has no observable change. Observable changes. No macroscopic properties are changing. Uh, can be reached from either direction by either adding products or reactants. The forward reaction is equal to the reverse reaction rate. So let's say rate of forward reaction equals rate of the reverse reaction. And concentration of products and concentration of reactants remains constant. Not equal to each other, but they remain at constant levels because the reaction rate is um, the same. So B says, deduce the uh, expression for the equilibrium constant. So expression just means, how would you set it up? So I'm going to have HI squared over H2 times the concentration of I2. C says, predict what would happen to the position of, the e of equilibrium if the pressure is increased. Well. I have two moles on the left side and two moles on the right. So for C, I would expect no change. Neither side is more crowded, so they're both going to have, the pressure is going to affect both sides equally. D says the value of Kc at 500K is 160, and the value of Kc at 700 is 54. Deduce what this tells us about the enthalpy change of the forward reaction. So <clears throat> when my temperature increases, my Kc value decreased. So that means as temperature increased, I had less product and more reactant. So that's my hint that this is an exothermic reaction because less product was being formed. Temperature did not favor the forward reaction, so it must be an exothermic reaction. And the enthalpy change then is negative. And then E, the reaction can be catalyzed by adding platinum metal. State and explain what effect the addition of platinum would have on the value of the equilibrium constant. And I don't know why it's only taking part of this up, but um, I'm going to go ahead and sneak E in right here then. So what effect would platinum have on the equilibrium constant? None. Catalysts only affect rates. Okay, it affects the rate, but not the yield.